Let's get into it then. Germany. Okay. Oh, last car, nice. Last car before I can just go drive, whatever. So let's face it, we already know it's gonna be. Just this one long drive. Don't have any time to. Get back into the road tree. Sounds good. So, wow, okay then. <laughs> Just thinking about, I know it's still a long way away, but thinking about the end of this and the video to be made with all the results. 1,920 screenshots. Do them as a one second per uh, per screenshot, 1,920 seconds is 32 minutes. So, yeah. I don't... I was kind of thinking, would I need an intro or something before we get into that? And then I thought, oh, I, don't know, I think it's like going to be at least... Kind of thinking about it, I'm like, it's a lot of minutes. It's like 30 minutes. Oh yeah, it's 32 minutes. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to need an intro to the video to tell people what the, tra what the task was. I can just start it in Finland. The thing will be editing the whole video. The only way I can think of doing it is I go through, I take all the screenshots. All the screenshots go to a folder. Like clear out my Steam screenshots folder or whatever. And uh, yeah, take the screenshots as I go along. Get every single screenshot. Check at the end that I've got all the screenshots. Hope that I've got all the correct screenshots, because the only way to check will be to make sure that I've got 1,920 of them.
which is going to take more than half an hour. It's probably going to take like three hours taking the screenshots. Jesus. Like if it's a second each one, it's going to take like five hours, uh, five seconds per one. That would be two and a half hours. Well, I'll work my way through it. I suppose I'll do it like this, I'll, you know, do a country at a time or whatever, a, a class at a time, and then check them. Check I've got all of the ones I need. And then it'll be naming them one, two, and I'll just name them, I think, one, two, three, four, all the way up. Or probably double O one for that purpose. And naming them. And then... Yeah, it'll be uh, a case of recording the audio over the top of that video, which I bet it should be able to put together with FFmpeg. There should be an FFmpeg command. It just might take my entire computer to process it. There's no way I'm dropping them into KDEN Live though. Like, holy shit, because the only way to do that would be to drop them in, you know, maybe... Yeah, maybe a class at a time and have 10 different videos of 192 clips, which is going to take forever and probably fuck it up. Whereas if I know they're all the right number, and I can just go 1.png, 2.png, 3.png, with some FFmpeg command. And FFmpeg is so much faster than Kaden, it could probably take each one of those like half an hour to render each of those videos, then I've got to mash them together at the end, all ten of them, and then render it with background footage. So that'll be an insane video. And it technically won't even show this whole setup because any records that I don't break aren't going to get shown. And any records that I set now and then break between now, you know, doing cat face things, doing dailies, doing randomly just not wanting to do a full 12 track run but just wanting to play a little out of rally, I'll just, you know, play maybe five tracks random country five tracks in any old car that I fancy playing with but it'll be more of a snapshot of my best times the, these videos are the snapshot of me actually doing it I suppose hours and hours and hours of uh, content
There's no way I'll be able to talk for half an hour though, that's the only thing it'll be. I suppose I'll just record for whatever, cut the end, send it to the back, and just like enjoy the rest of the, the video, which will just probably be out of rally music. Yep. I never once got the logging truck into fifth gear. Every single track in the game. I think it's possible on a couple of tracks, one in Kenya and one in uh, maybe two in Australia, but that would be it. I 
I did get it into fifth gear, but it was a forced fifth gear. It was like not even halfway through the revs of fourth and pretty much an instant change down just to see if it even did fifth. It wasn't a real fifth gear for sure. Yeah, it's mostly gear two and three. And you actually can't start it in second as well. Like what you said the other day about um, being the only person to start in first, you can't second gear start the logging truck. You just can't go. You've just got to... Okay. It's good fun though. It's good fun. I enjoyed my time in the logging truck. Art of logging. There was one. It was not easy. It was not long after I started playing the game. A couple of people had a logging truck. There's been a few times where people have gone for had like friendly time trial leaderboards competition in the logging truck. The trouble is you have you can't play the logging truck in custom rallies, so you'd have to just do it via time trials and just do back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back time trials. If we could do logging trucks and that in actual races, that'd be sick. It would mean I'd have to do uh, a third of, nearly a third of this, or no, more than a third of this whole thing again, because four of the classes would suddenly have speedrun leaderboards that I'd have to compete in. So I'd have to do all of the logging truck, which is probably more than half of it in terms of actual playtime. Because it's logging truck. Fucking slow ass cars. Logging truck, Dakar truck, the vans. did all of them in time trial. But, yeah. Just after I started the stream, I had a thought, what am I going to do when I actually finish this and making the video and that? And I quickly looked. And if I do all 1920 tracks, one second per track in a video, it's 32 minute long video. Which I think, I think that's probably the best way to put into perspective how many tracks there are in this game. Right? If, you, if each track took a second, it'd take you half an hour to do this. Oh yeah, I'm uploading everything. Everything's going into a set into a. This, I've got a second YouTube channel with all these videos going up, so that I've got something for proof. So yeah, they're all all going up. Well over a day of footage on that channel so far, just of me driving this shit, just driving around. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how long, because that'll be my that'll be my real timer, because I can't use the for one 
I've kind of forgotten how many hours I had in the game when I started this. I think it was 140. It might have been 160. Uh, but also, I was in game for three hours yesterday making a livery. I was in game playing Catface a couple of seasons. Doing dailies, doing weeklies. Just playing, because I also still enjoy playing. Yeah, I've not got that many hours in this. By the time I've... That's kind of the thing that's quite funny. By the time I've finished this, I'll probably have... 250 hours. At least. Probably... It's, I think it'll be about 120, 120, 140 hours to do this whole challenge thing. No. I don't know. It'll be many hours. If each track took a minute, so if each track takes three minutes, which it takes probably more than, It'd be 108. It's probably 200 hours to do this challenge, which interests me that I'm over halfway and I've done less than 100 hours. Have I missed something? I'm worried. This is group three. Anyway, it would take me a lot of hours but there's people who aren't even close to finishing every track because you have to purposefully do it and I think if you're gonna finish every track is it'd probably take you longer to figure out which tracks you're missing and do them all in time trial and do it slowly that way rather than just smashing through them plus I'm gonna have every world record uh, 12 track custom rallies on speedrun.com for a little while you know no one's going to take them all I would like a genuine world record that's something once I've finished this it's one of those things that I want to then go and grind for pick a record and actually like set it good set it good so that other people have to try and beat it potentially pick a record that other people are already on so that I've got something to beat rather than just you know set as good a time as I can and hope that it's decent maybe beg someone like Frankie or Doma to take a look at it see if they can't beat it if they can't beat it in one go that would be kind of the best for me all tracks all cars yeah no, I am doing all cars. I am doing all cars, but all cars are getting one... One use. The only car I'm missing, there's one car I'm not going to play with, which is Dasuba Speed Fan, the Group B one. Because there are more cars in Group B after the... Well, there's, there's more cars than there are categories. Than, um, than there are sets of 12 stages. So I'm not playing... Oh yeah, it would be stupid. It'd be absolutely ridiculous. But hey. So is every single... I mean, so is all of this. It's all ridiculous. I've technically done it for three categories because you've only got one one logging truck, one da uh, Dakar truck, one um, what's its face triwheeler vans. You've got three of. There was something from one of the devs when I first talked about doing this. That there should be an achievement for the fastest person, and I want them. Like, I would love to see categories. I don't know if it'd be possible, and I don't think they're going to do it because they've stopped developing it, the game for the most part. Um, 
people just doing bug fixes. But the thing is, it would be so cool to have like a category. So I could say to you, what's your total time? All of your speed, all of your speed runs in Group Four Germany, or your total time in everything Germany. But it'd be so difficult to implement because you'd need to. You'd need to separate, like, your total time in Group 4 Germany and you'd probably want to get rid of the logging truck and it'd have to tell you, are you missing this track? So there'd have to be no bonus cars or including bonus cars for all of Germany. Is it in the rain? There'd be so many different categories. I think it can be done by looking at your leaderboards.txt file. I think. But it would... It requires honesty though, because that's your offline one, which you can just edit, because the seconds are just there. You just open it, and it's a text file. You find the track, you find the, uh, the number, you change the number. It won't upload to the leaderboards. That's why there's no cheating. Because the leaderboards can literally only accept from the game when you finish. Which is why you can't play offline and then upload to the leaderboards. So all it'll do is show your local time, your local personal best. But when you actually check your leaderboards time, it'll be a different time. Which could be a problem when I come to edit all of my stuff. If I've got an offline personal best, then trying to get a picture of me is just going to show local. So I'll have to then beat that personal best in time attack to be able to take the picture. Because I want them all to be online. For the pictures at least, I don't really care. Once I've done this, that's it. But yeah, you can edit the times in the leaderboards.txt. So my theory is that you can also parse that for data. You'd first have to dump out all the daily and weekly, but that should be fairly easy. Um, take the file, ditch every line <laughs> that isn't daily or weekly. Then take a look at the... Um, yeah, then you'd just have to do some other stuff and organise it and I don't know. Could be easy, I'm not actually that good of a programmer to do it. If I can just get it to add up my total time, I'll be happy. I think. Like if at the end it can just add up my total time, so I'd have to just remove Due to be delivered today between 10 and 2. Okay, so I need to not leave the house before the post comes. Before about 2. Good. I was confused because I had the notification. It didn't come. Got the red card through on Saturday. Okay, fair play. What the fuck is Twitch on with? I've just gone back to... Twitch, like normal Twitch, rather than using my normal chat preview. And it says for you, returning chatter. I understand first time chatter. Why do I need to give a shit about a returning chatter? Surely returning chatter? Like, maybe if it's been a long time. But it was fucking yesterday or the day before. <laughs> like, I, w I would love to see that, returning chatter. It's been more than a year, you know? But like yesterday... I mean, like, 
surely it wouldn't work. I was thinking, okay, maybe it'd work for a big stream. They'd be able to see how many returning chatters, but surely everyone's going to be a returning chatter in a big stream or a first-time chatter. Like, what? What's the indication between the two? What's a What's a normal chatter? Yeah, they have the streams in a row. Oh, piss. Are you no longer a returning chatter, by the way? It heard me. Your uh, returning chatter status has just disappeared. Rip. Also, it's like, hold on, what's that button? Returning chatter. What? So, it's got returning chatter. Yeah. So it's got returning chatter, and then in the corner it's got streamer icon and then mod icon. It's like, what? I thought there were buttons. I don't know what the streamer icon would do, but like, imagine if it was like, this guy's returning. Do you want to give him mod? Like, no. <laughs> Not really, just because someone's been around twice. Right when I first started streaming, like 2012, 2013, Twitch used to kind of encourage you to make every fucker in your chat a mod. And... That's when they ended up with... Yeah, you know this guy for one day, give him a mod. But yeah, it used to be a thing everyone was mod, and that's why uh, VIPs exist, because people used to get mod so that they would be noticed in a chat. So it was easier to spot, because you'd read the mod comment, because it had a badge next to it. And that's why VIPs now exist. Um, but mods... Yeah, I had tons of mods back in the day. It, pretty much everyone who came to my stream regularly ended up being a mod. As that was the done thing at the time. And now it's like... I'll mod people if I need to. There's people who definitely could be mods, but I just... I've never had a need to mod people, because I either have like two people chatting, or... Even when I have had a lot of people chatting, it's never been a problem. There's never any reason to ban anyone. But even doing World Cup last year, there were like 10, 20 people chatting. Yeah, worst case, pause the game, ban someone. But, yeah, there were like 10 people chatting in that 20 30 people watching and i never felt the need to have any mods there was literally at one point zero mods in the chat except for me and i still didn't feel and i had but at the same time with that the reason it's kind of different i didn't feel the need to have any mods because everyone was just talking and it was exactly the same but if I'd needed any mods, it would have been like there were mods from the game server, so I would have just had got Des or someone. There was plenty of people. There was just no need for any mods because, in general, people just don't say dumb stuff in small chats. In fact, I, I'm a mod in quite a few friends' channels. It's still the done thing to mod your mates. But, honestly, the only thing I ever have to ban is um, the spam bots. The only thing I ever have to ban in my own stream is the spam bots. That's it. It's just the spam bots. Oh wait, I've just realised that it's... I'm oh, a fucking idiot. What I was saying before I realised about the mod thing was um, checking on my Royal Mail delivery. 
I was checking on whether it would come today because I was like, oh, I don't want to leave the house and go do that thing until uh, until the posts come, so my glasses get here. The thing I was going to do was go and pick up the post from the what's here. If it wasn't getting delivered today, then I would just go down to the depot and pick it up. You know, it's like a 10 minute walk. I know, imagine leaving the house. I left the house earlier today. I went to my dad's to pick up a different bike because I've had a bike in the shed because it's kind of a summer mountain bike with not a lot of tread be it for BMX track racing and stuff like that so useless in the winter because it's got fuck all tread on it but great in the summer and so I swapped that with a more winter oriented cross country mountain bike because it's now summer and I don't need the super heavy tread and cheap parts that are on it that I don't care about getting covered in mud and then leaving kind of rusty. So I went to swap, get to my dad's, get home. My back wheel feels back wheel's fucking wobbly as fuck. All the tools are on my dad's. So I've got to cycle back probably tomorrow. <laughs> Instead of going on a ride on it tomorrow, go back to my dad's to fix the back wheel and then maybe go on a ride. Because the back wheel is dodgy. I can't be asked to put grease in it though. I'm just going to let it die. I'm just going to proper let it die. Oh, I love riding my bike in the snow. Absolutely love it. Snow's great. Because snow has a gr really cool amount of grip. There's a lot of grip to snow. Also, snow at three degrees? What the fuck? Yeah, cold, yeah. I've ridden in colder. I mean, I live in England, so it's not actually that bad. But minus four is fine for short periods. I wouldn't want to go on like a two hour ride in the minus four, but. You know, half an hour to work or whatever. Got told off by my teacher at college when I used to go to college on an apprenticeship because I cycled over. Um, just pissing it down at like minus two. And I cycle over, I get there, park my bike up, go into the classroom. She's like, you are soaking! Yeah, cycled. Oh, well, uh, well, you would have been more annoyed if I didn't turn up, wouldn't you? If I just stayed at work, inside. That was when I realised I really needed a new coat, because the uh, waterproof liner had worn out on the one that I had. And it was just a... Ah, oh, nice. I live near some woods and small hills. Well, not really hills. There's not really any downhill mountain biking here. There's a couple of small, tiny, tiny, tiny spots. Uh, but the main thing is... Cross-country, BMX. And the wrong end of town for the BMX is my problem. It's like quite difficult to get to the BMX track from where I live. Even more difficult to do so on an actual BMX. Uh, they do apparently have a couple of open nights where they don't mind if you bring a mountain bike. Which, it, you know, is the only way I'd be able to get there. There is no way I'm riding a BMX. I think it's like 12 miles. Like, ride a BMX 12 miles, I'll be fucked. But right, that's like 20k if you use metric. Um, ride it 20 miles, uh, 20k. Then ride round a BMX track and do some BMX racing. And then ride home. Like, fuck that. Yeah, just somehow get it in a uh, backpack. I have seen people use um, front wheel holders and then carry the BMX like a trailer. So you put the BMX, you hold the, f take the front wheel off, put that 
strap that to your backpack or something. Then you use one of the fork holding things to put a bolt through, like a fake front wheel, onto the back of a rack and then have it like a trailer. It works because the front wheel can effectively turn because it's still got the handlebar bits, you know, and the steering. So it could turn like a trailer. And I kind of want to try that. I do kind of want to try that at some point. But it does look such a weapon when people have pegs on. And they've just got one peg sticking out the back of their backpack like a shield. And they've just strapped it to their backpack with uh, like a hiking backpack and all the cords and stuff hanging off of it. Looks so cool, but also so dangerous. But I wouldn't have that because I'd be going to a racetrack. So you can't have pegs, so I'd have to take my pegs off. It's annoying because my place doesn't do rentals. Because otherwise it'd be fine. Jump on a commuter bike, jump on my commuter. Head across town. Turn up. Rent a bike. They do rental helmets because you need a full face for certain levels of activity. I don't really want to buy a full face unless I'm doing an activity that needs one. Because they're not really... I want a half shell. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to get for my next skateboard helmet. This current one is a bit long in the teeth. do not really fit me properly anymore. If I don't skateboard enough, or BMX enough. So a half cut one's what I want when I replace it. Half cut's like the one with the... Uh, comes over your ears, goes down. Rather than the standard piss pot Tony Hawk style helmet. That sounds like the dog attack of the postman. Dogs are better bloody doorbell than the doorbell. Somehow knows when things are coming before they turn up. Anyway, glasses are here. I might be able to see now. See, that would be useful if I read. So I've got a bookmark in there. Unboxing experience in this uh, speedrun. One thing that annoys me, I used to work in a warehouse, and something that annoys me is when people don't fold the delivery notes smoothly, they just smash them in. It's like, take half a second, fold it properly. 
instant better times. Hopefully. The fuck is... Oh, that's minging. Oh, what the fuck? The glasses cleaner that they give you... It's... the, the Like, the branding on it is printed onto the uh, fabric. Oh, they look sick. Q... Gonna need to use the glasses cleaner because the uh, case that they were very proud of, the fact that it uses recycled materials, will um, probably go in the recycling thing because it's fucking just disintegrated in the box. Kind of half. It's a soft case rather than a hard case. Let's see how uh, this looks then. Ooh. Everything looks a lot better. That is a lot. It's also a lot better than the old glasses that we're using, which are like from 2016, like eight years old. It's like side by side comparison of uh, how clean everything looks. So that's good. That's a bit blurry. That's like cleaner, but around, it only works on my first, on my primary screen right in front of me, out the corner of my eye. It doesn't, so I can't read chat very well. Build quality on these glasses for my review is, yep, they are £10. That, that's the build quality review I'm going to give you. That is a £10 pair of glasses. Cool, let's go. probably get used to the fact that I can uh, that I can see the edge of the glasses maybe at some point it's also funny that they give you a bookmark because like 90% of people need glasses for reading but you could also imagine the guy who needs glasses for driving or whatever. Well, this bookmark is useful. <laughs> Made in UK from recycled PET. Plastic bags. Yeah, only nerds that read things need glasses. I know. Funniest part about this, there's a slight tinge right at the start when you're starting a track. Or probably, well, probably all the time, but the shadows in this game are kind of dithered. They're, um, instead of, when you're on low settings, instead of being true shadows, they're kind of grainy, like fully see-through bits and then not see-through. And I can see that they look really good when I've not got my glasses on. Yay for glasses. Hopefully they don't dig into my head. I might actually have to also sit up properly, because... Oh, this game looks amazing on max settings, I just can't run it. I, I just can't run it on max settings. Plus I've got a 144Hz screen, which is a terrible, terrible, it's an amazing investment if you also are prepared to keep up with the computer, like, sliding down. Because, so I bought this 144Hz monitor two years after I last upgraded my computer, last upgraded it in 2017. Yeah. Last upgraded this computer in 2017, yeah. And then I did a side grade to AMD, that was it. So I did a side grade to AMD and got the um, 144Hz screen uh, in 2019, I think. Yeah. 
side grade to AMD was because I use Linux, because I'm a fucking nerd. Um, so it was just better, but I went from a 1060, uh, NVIDIA 1060, to a 580, which is basically the same performance. Same performance, same price, sold the other one. Lost a little bit, but didn't have to deal with NVIDIA drivers, so, you know. Gained a bit of performance on the basis of didn't have to deal with NVIDIA drivers. And the drivers are still getting updated and still getting better now, which is sick. I know, these fucking nerds. Nerd users. Uh, E, E, the arch one that begins with E. Elib no fucking hell. Endeavor. Endeavor. It's good. I was recommended it by a friend because I swapped between rolling releases and stable releases for a long time and I was on Ubuntu a couple of years ago and I literally the LTS I was on was about to go out of date and I was like if I'm going to update this I was pissed off with the snaps problem with Ubuntu using snaps and I said to, I was talking to a friend and I was like because Antergos I, last time I used Arch was Antergos And I used... And Antergos is dead. Manjaro has issues. I'm not too certain on the details. I have just heard that, and that Manjaro has certain issues. I was like, okay. We'll just go away. Mostly with the like upstream nature of it. And trying to make Arch into stable was vaguely what I heard. Like making Arch more stable. Endeavour was sold to me on the basis that it's like Manjaro where they take Arch and you basically just have Arch and you can always just do your Arch things like Antergos and Manjaro but closer to um, closer to what Antergos was where it's a bit closer to Arch and you're pretty much always using Arch just with some modernisation features and the thing that fully fully sold it for me was the reason I stopped using Antergos was because I broke it trying to make it real arch when Antergos stopped being supported and when I broke it I decided to destroy hop which is what I usually do if I break a system I just destroy hop uh, yeah what was I on? oh yeah I was only on fucking Ubuntu for a short time because I was on Void before that why did I stop being on Void? I stopped being on Void because you have to properly install Void. That was it. I had to reinstall the OS because stuff was broken. And I stopped being on Void. Yeah. Because you have to properly reinstall Void. You can't just like half arse it with a graphical user interface. If you want... Well, you can, but then I'd have to set up KDE on my own. And basically I didn't want to set up KDE. I wanted an installer that came with KDE. My void install was mildly broken because I installed Mate, then KDE on top of it, and then removed Mate, and then didn't quite remove Mate because I still wanted to use some of the GNOME packages that come with Mate because they're quite good. My system got so much more streamlined when I fully embraced KDE though because I had been using so many KDE I had the entirety of KDE installed I just didn't use the Plasma desktop like I, I was using pretty much all the other programs I used Dolphin for a bit for god's sake anyway cheers Turbo please don't ban my run thank you very much you're wonderful oh gracious Turbo thank you thank you thank you <laughs>